Hey, this is Nick from Hard Reset. We are down in Las Vegas at CES. We came down to check out the latest technology and see what's on the horizon and talk about how they're going to change the way we live in the future. Come along and take a look at some of our favorite things that we saw while we were here. My favorite product from the show was this technology from Exeter called Powerfoil. It's a light, flexible solar panel that is efficient enough to work indoors or outdoors and powerful enough to replace batteries in a ton of different devices. Powerfoil technology is used in headphones from Urbanista Design, Adidas, and even 3M. What's your favorite product here? The 3M headset. Okay, show me the 3M headset. Vamos. Hello? Mr. 3M here today. Okay, thank you. So this is the most advanced hearing protector ever made, I dare to say. What would the batteries typically have had to be in, in something like this? For the current product, it's a standalone or standard alkaline battery. Okay. Disposable batteries. Disposable batteries. So, I mean, that's a one week use. So, yeah. every week I would have had to change the batteries in this. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Can I try them on? Yeah. There's music playing. Yeah. My music. Oh, okay. <laughs> Frederick passes the vibe check. Yeah, this is good yeah. music. All right. <laughs> Powerfoil is also used in bike helmets, pet tracking harnesses, remotes, speakers, and many other small devices. These are great looking products. These are like well designed, high, good, great brands. It's critical. Yes, yeah. to see. You can't expect, you know, someone to buy good for the world speaker unless right. it has great sound and looks cool. Right. There's a huge convenience factor to the idea that you might never need to replace the batteries in something like a pair of Bluetooth headphones. But there's also a power efficiency and sustainability side to this that is really important. I was also into these smart telescopes from Veonis. One connects to your cell phone so that as your phone's camera gets better, so does your telescope. So this is the kind of results you can have with the sun. And the power of this magnifying system, like is 25 times zoom, and so it never gets obsolete. It's just you when you change your phone that you enhance the quality of the things you can capture with it. So you just put your camera on this, and then we created like few magnets to make the adjustment really steady so it right. won't move when you're doing your observation. The other has its own built-in camera and can be controlled with an app. So it's actually orienting itself based on the... Exactly, and it has an automatic tracking, so it will just fix the point that you are observing and it will follow it the whole night. This is the kind of picture you can get with this, and all this without any knowledge and technology, so all you have to, to do is to follow the steps and just enjoy the experience. Both are a significant upgrade from the telescopes that I used as a kid. We also saw some cool transparent display technology. It would be very easy to dismiss this as a gimmick because, well, most people don't want a clear TV. But this has a lot of cool use cases like smart retail displays or in-car windshields to create heads-up displays that adapt to outside lighting conditions. I also loved these no-snow skis from Squeal. They're super cool looking and seem relatively dangerous, which is always a winning combination. The product can be uh, at uh, 80 km per hour, so that it's very fast, but don't be afraid. There's like a lower center of gravity, so it's very stable. It's like a big shoe. Very cool. And to be really safe, we have like another brake. So you have the brake with the handle right. and another brake just here. A mechanical one. Exactly. So you just lean back on that and the friction pulls down the tire? Exactly. Right. They claim that they're safe, but believe me when I say I could definitely hurt myself on these. But the electric skis were just one example of cool innovations we saw in the realm of mobility. We also saw a lot of interesting new ideas from companies like Hyundai with this e-corner system. The general idea is that you have your motor for your wheel here, a suspension here, and the power steering here all in one unit. That means you don't have to have things like a transmission or powertrain or differential to distribute power to all the different tires in a vehicle. They all have their own motor. That allows you to build cars you just couldn't build before in form factors and shapes you couldn't do before. These allow cars to move in more agile ways than they ever could before. All right, do I need a, do I, should I wear a seatbelt? Whoa. <laughs> That's a good thing you too. <laughs> Hyundai has developed this as a technology that can be used in many different cars and types of vehicles, including autonomous cars and taxis. But if personal car ownership is still the status quo in the era of autonomous cars, what kind of experiences will those cars offer us? That's a constant mobility from LG, and we built this car because we are kind of preparing the future. 
we believe actually inside of the car will be just becoming just like your home. LG's concept car was a fun look at car ownership in the future. While a lot of companies like Zoox or Waymo are positioning autonomous vehicles as a transportation on demand service, LG's concept is the opposite. Would you like to have coffee? Sure. So there's a coffee machine built in. Yeah. Yep. That's nice. coming from the trunk. Oh my God. Mike, you gotta get a shot of that. The coffee machine comes out of the trunk and is delivered directly to me. This by itself might be the feature of the year. We also really loved this modular van system from Kia and the idea that you could build a specific set of functions into your vehicle. This is especially useful for people who use their vehicles for work. Even if autonomous vehicles mean fewer and fewer people have cars, the people who rely on their vehicles for work will still want to own them. A platform like this, where you can almost design your own vehicle with pieces like their Legos, is super well positioned for that world. Stiffer than steel is my prison nickname. Home manufacturing is another area where we saw a lot of cool stuff. We visited the folks from Formlabs and were amazed by the huge spectrum of materials you can use in their 3D printers. Everything from a super squishy silicone to a super rigid ceramic part can be printed in the same machine. To print a material or to get started with the print or to change a material on our printer, this is a tank. Uh, it is empty here, but uh, in use, this would contain your resin. Right. And then there's also a cartridge in the back. And the cartridge in the back is what dispenses resin into that tank. So this is really just like changing a like a printer toner. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we print on a build platform that you can see here. Um, so this is, you know, upside down SLA. So uh, you're printing, your parts are upside down, kind of coming out of this tank of resin here. It emerges from the tank. It's, it's a kind of, it's almost like a spooky image. It's kind of cool to see. The time lapse has always looked super duper cool. So very, very easy to use. There's not the same amount of like settings and tweaking that you would have uh, from a bit more of like a DIY. Uh, type product. Um, you know, we do all of our resin development and all of our settings development in-house so that everything works well together. To be clear, the ceramics still need to basically be fired in a kiln, but the fact that they can be shaped in the same home 3D printer that produced super soft materials like this is kind of mind-blowing. Beyond additive manufacturing, we were excited to meet the folks from Coast Runner, which have developed a desktop CNC machine capable of milling a diverse array of materials. This wheel that we did out of aluminum, uh, this took about three hours to do. Turner's cube, this is done out of 17 4 steel. Oh, wow. This uh, multi-tool is done from titanium. Oh, wow. To emphasize that, we've put the chemical symbol on it. One of the major things we're trying to accomplish with this project is to make CNC as easy as 3D printing. You can see that we've got these step-by-steps on the side. This job is already in progress, but you'll notice that we've got a photo showing you what to do. We've got text describing what to do. It'll tell you when to install a tool, when to install your fixtures, and when it comes time to actually run code, you just push the button and it will run it all for you. This is something you could literally put on your desk next to your computer and run it. We even saw 3D printing for food and supplements, which has all sorts of applications for things like personalized dietary and medical needs. Another area we saw a lot of focus on was new interface technologies. With AR and VR becoming much more widely adopted, it's interesting to see people experimenting with how we might interact with those new devices. One of the coolest interface technologies we saw was from Afferents, which is developing a technology that allows haptic feedback in VR and AR by directly stimulating the nervous system. This means you wouldn't rely on little vibrating motors. You could instead send signals up and down your nerves that directly mimic the sensations you'd experience in the real world. We're feeding a lot of information through our eyes and our ears, but we're so used to getting all this other information. We've done a very good job in AR and VR in two senses, right. vision and audio. Now we need to add the third, which is tactile and the others, as you're pointing out. And what hand-based interactions are gonna, uh, are gonna enable spatial computing to really take off. We've, we've all been taught how to use our finger and touch a screen. That, that wasn't the case 15 or 20 years ago. We're about to learn new behaviors like gestures to control digital content. And we think the sense of touch right, is uh, the missing piece. And when it comes to all the technology we'll be wearing on our bodies in the coming years, we were especially interested in the work by the folks at Ixana. They've developed a technology that allows wireless transmission between devices without broadcasting radio waves like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. They do this by using your body as the connector. And they can even send video signals from one part of your body to another just by touch. Right now I'm wearing this glass that has a camera here. And this glass also has our chip, YR. And by touching here, you can see 
Right now I'm looking down and it's updating. What's happening is the data from the camera and the glass is going around my body to this electrode here, which also has our chip. So it's receiving the data. That's why it allows it to happen. Now if I remove my finger, it'll freeze because it's not part of my body network anymore. This is a fundamentally new wireless technology. And the application for this is endless. Any device manufacturer who really wants to send or receive data using low power can do that through YR. This could be a whole new way for wearable devices to talk to each other without scrambling up the air with a bunch of radio frequencies. One of the most interesting things that we saw at CES was not the products themselves, but the people behind them. While it's true that many of the things we saw were developed by massive international companies, we also saw a lot of small startups. We especially loved seeing how many people had worked to develop a technology or device in their garage or their university and had brought it to CES so that people could discover it for the first time. Many of these smaller startups were actually creating products that enable even more people to bring new ideas into the world. This is a trend we hope will continue as more creative people have a say in how the world of tomorrow works. Seeing that process and being able to take a small part in it was maybe the best thing about the whole trip. So you can use the watch basically to point at something, tap, and turn oh, it on. Oh, you got it, you got it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get my Hogwarts letter tomorrow. Right, yeah.